Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Zoom Into Wine. It's time for the show and your host, Ian Blackburn. All right, good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, this is our mm -hmm. second dinner with Chef Christopher Emmy, and I'm going to be sharing this uh, uh, moment with uh, our Facebook audience while I let um, Chef Emmy introduce himself. Um, I know he needs no introduction to many of you, but um, Chef Emmy, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you very much, guys. Good evening to everybody. Hope you're going to enjoy your food. And if you have any questions, I'm here to answer the question about the food. Sorry, we forgot to uh, to give you the the menus. The menus, you know, the menu, uh, instruction, everything was inside, and we forgot we forgot to put that in the bag. It was kind of a rush again, and uh, forgot uh, to fix. So, I got it out pretty quickly. Hopefully, everyone was able to get it. Hi, Jerry. Hey, Ian. Hey, everybody. Hey, Michael. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm so pleased to work with you both, and it's such an honor and such difficult times to create something so um, soothing and um, and um, uh, very comforting. So I, I really hope everyone enjoys the food, the wine. We have a very special guest from Kermit Lynch joining us tonight, my friend Adam Zuckert. Hi, Adam. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me. I'm going to put a gallery view so I can spotlight you as well, Adam. Oh. Let me find you. There you are. Keep moving on me. There you go. <sighs> ah, look at that. So you might, you might know Adam uh, for years in the wine business here in Los Angeles. He and I uh, continue to race each other to see who can uh, lose the, f the hair the fastest. <laughs> But uh, nobody wants to win that race, Ian. <laughs> but you you have a much cooler background. I love uh, you're a musician. You're into your your food, your wine, your music. We should have had you do a like a an opening um, musical thing, Adam. That would have been very cool. That's going to be the next pairing, right? <laughs> wine, and, wine and music on uh, Zoom into wine. Yes. Chef, um, we are excited to get started. And uh, what I'd love for you just to give everyone a little background about yourself. And and uh, I'm gonna take this live on Facebook while you do that. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love Chef, you know, I'm just trying to make him nervous with Sarah. This is the thing. <laughs> uh, many, uh, many of you know me already with the restaurant Hortolan where I was in Los Angeles before. But uh, I, grew up, uh, I grew up in Loire Valley, is why we do this uh, Loire Valley wine, uh, in terms of farm, um, kind of. And uh, after I go to Paris to work like in uh, probably 10 years in a two star and two star Michelin, and also in Bangkok at Royal Hotel, and after I moved to New York and arrived here, and, uh, I was a chef at L'Orangerie, for some people know it, and after I opened Hortolan. Hortolan was the best new restaurant in LA and, uh, in 2005. And, uh, and also a best new restaurant in America in 2005, and I was the best new chef also in 2005. And uh, we were closed in 2010, 10, advent of 2010. And after I did some a few, uh, few private chef, food dinner party, and um, open cast, I stayed only for six months. You have some problems with my partner. And uh, now I'm doing also again some private, uh, private dinner again. If somebody is interesting to do a private dinner. <laughs> and uh, that's it. That's it. That's it. Very good. And Adam, um, why don't you tell people a little bit about your background and, and how you got to Kermit Lynch? Absolutely. Well, thanks for having me, Ian. And Chef, uh, pleasure. We met at CAS uh, during uh, the opening uh, and worked together on some of the wines there. Um, of course, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, big fan, of, big fan of your food. Happy to be doing this with you. And Ordalon, prior to that, I uh, I have worked in wine for about twenty years. I began in wine retail and worked as a sommelier at a restaurant called Sona, which is no longer here, uh, unfortunately. And eventually worked my way into the wholesale business. I have a real affinity for French wine and language and food. And uh, Kermit Lynch is the ultimate in terms of boutique French wines that are imported here to the States. He's one of the first to bring in wines from out of the way regions like 
um, Chateauneuf du Pop and Chinon, um, when bigger importers were only bringing in things like Bordeaux. Uh, I've worked with Kermit for about 10 years now, and now I'm the uh, manager of the wholesale distribution uh, department of the company here in California. And we sell to amazing restaurants and retailers like Merchant of Wine. I thank you, Adam. And uh, we're we're excited to pull this all together. Now, Chef, you are born and raised in the Loire Valley, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, uh, near to uh, near to Angers, between Angers and Saumur, for people know, it's a little village named Jersey, like a thousand people, two thousand cows. So, <laughs> and, uh, and it's, uh, you know, I grew up with my father was uh, like I don't know, seven, eight years old. He was going to get some uh, Vouvray, you know, take the car, driving to the to the wine guys, you know, making the wine and take Vouvray, testing like 10 different wines. But my father, not me, of course, you know. And I remember because my father was all the time come back with the car, like really like, wow. <laughs> my mother was always saying, all the time say, Charles, Charles, can I do it? It's okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. And the car was really, but at this period, you know, it was not so much, so much traffic, but he was, uh, yeah, I, I know the, the French wine and uh, I know Bois Valais you know, very well. Nice. Well, we've got some great fans of yours on the Zoom tonight and uh, some friends of ours as well. And we want to thank you all for joining us. We've got uh, some of our members tuning in from places far away like Japan. Uh, Catherine Carpenter's on our Zoom tonight with the Getty. We're super happy to see you. We did a great project last year on champagne together. It was beautiful. My friend Jessica and Garth are sitting back there. Uh, good to see you guys. David and Maria, Michael Richards. I'm glad every, we got to hook up tonight and get everything taken care of for you. Okay, have your salad, Michael. <laughs> uh, let's see. Susan French, it looks like you're uh, in good condition there. You've got everything you need. Yeah, we're doing great, Ian. Fantastic. Good, good. Well, I'm, I'm glad it's all working out. We, we like to uh, challenge ourselves. We, um, we have some fantastic people uh, zooming in from all over the place. And uh, we sent wine in a lot of directions as well. And um, uh, so we're, we're encouraging you to ask questions, to use the chat box. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna go all over the Loire Valley tonight. Adam, I'm gonna surprise you too, because we actually have a PowerPoint that uh, will kind of help us a little bit. And uh, it's in wine order. So just a couple slides about each wine um, to help you and me and to guide us along. But uh, let's get started with our first wine and, and, um, and let's toast everybody. Cheers to you. Okay. 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 I better get a glass. I don't think I can drink it out of the bottle. <laughs> I mean, you can. I did. <laughs> but, uh, but I better go get a glass while you guys are, are chatting. And uh, I, I want to start off, uh, Chef, with uh, the first discussion going to you. And so, uh, the, the first one is a little uh, gougère with some uh, truffle and bechamel. And I hope everybody warm up in the oven at 350. And uh, it's a little, little bad, you know, when you work in, in French in a like some uh, Michel star, it was like kind of like a little amuse bouche we give, uh, uh, like in Taiwan, for example, in Paris. It was little things like that, we give him some time during the truffle season. So it's why I do something like this. And uh, when I grew up, it was always something before dinner, uh, before when we do like uh, Christmas things, it was always some uh, trepas, and it was always some bougère, but of course it was a truffle, it was a like it was a fancy, but it, it was in Romeba, it's a bit my childhood, you know, so it's why I'm doing that tonight, to start with the wine and the uh, bougère. Now, Adam, we, we selected um, for the first wine tonight to go with uh, the Muscadet and uh, it's um, drinking great. Um, I know I got the wines over to you, Adam. You were able to take along with us as well. I was impressed with the, the small bottles that you've used, the packaging, they, they all show great. Yeah, it's been working out really well. We, it's a lot of work, um, but uh, we, we feel like it's it's working well. The vintners are actually telling me 
that the wine, I'm sending the wines to Washington, to Oregon, uh, to parts of California, and uh, they're, sh they're arriving and the vintners are saying that they're in really good shape. They're very happy with it. So um, we, we were kind of banking on that for a while. Hopefully the wine laws continue to allow us to sell wine by the glass <laughs> for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, we we appreciate um, everyone tasting this first wine. And uh, Adam, why don't you give us just a quick uh, rundown about Muscadet and your feelings on it? Absolutely. Well, um, Muscadet is the name of the wine and the region where the wine comes from. The grape is actually called Melon de Bourgogne. And it's located when we see a map, we'll be able to see, but it's it's on the west, it's on the um, western edge of the Loire, where the river empties out into the Atlantic. I think a lot of people here understand what the Loire is, but for anybody who who hasn't been there or, or um, is maybe is interested in a little bit of facts here you know the loire is it's about a 300 mile stretch this valley from this is a great map man from Sancerre and uh puy sur loire in the east all the way past nantes which is the muscadet region and out to the atlantic you've got about 300 miles there it's a very slow running uh big river and that helps moderate the climate uh, for vineyards to grow in such a northerly and cool climate, right? Uh, Paris is just north of here and uh, you're not too far from Chablis and Champagne when you're in Sancerre. These cooler climates uh, result in grapes that retain a lot of bright, refreshing acidity in both white and red. And that is a real hallmark for the Loire. Uh, Muscadet in general, Melon de Bourgogne, is known for being kind of a rather neutral wine in terms of fruitiness. It does have a kind of lemon uh, flavor to it, but really kind of that stony minerality. Um, yep, exactly. Thanks for circling that in. You betcha. Um, racy acidity, and it has a really kind of nice creamy texture. That's due to being aged on the lees for quite a long time. The lees are little bits of grape skins and yeast that have been exasperated, and they kind of make like a little kind of soft film at the bottom of a tank, or in this case, or a barrel. In Muscadet, it's very traditional to use underground glass or ceramic line tanks. They're underground, they're very stable in terms of the temperature and in terms of moving. And um, they kind of stir the leaves in there. They help uh, prevent, uh, they kind of work as a antioxidant and they help this kind of build this creamy um, dense palate, which turns out to be a real tech, you know, tech, the texture of Muscadet turns out to be one of the really most appealing things about it. Uh, the wine's often paired with a lot of different seafood. I'm mm -hmm. sure Ian's talked about it before. Um, oysters is kind of a is a is a kind of a magical pairing that gets talked about quite a bit. Sure, and um, you know this wine actually ages pretty interestingly well. Um, I have uh, an aged a Muscadet on our our website. You know some producers even put a little bit of wood on it. Um, but, but it's a it's a wine that takes on some pretty interesting character as it ages. I wouldn't recommend it getting 30 or 40 years old or anything like that, but just a you know a nice 10 year kind of mark on the wine makes some pretty interesting aromatic characters and advanced character. But it's also really famous for being fresh and crispy and perfect for that fresh seafood. So it's a, a quite an adventurous wine and always a great value and uh, just really over delivers. And I think that it's classic bistro, French bistro uh, cuisine, and that's why we started here. And it's also kind of the gateway uh, into the Loire Valley. Is this our producer here? Uh, yeah. This is actually, if if you do plan a trip when we can all travel again, mm -hmm. um, traveling from, um, from Muscadet or Nantes, 
uh, east is a really wonderful trip for um, in terms of you know visiting the different wine regions and kind of building up intensity. You also have obviously um, there's lots of chateaux, um, you know, hundreds of them that are kind of dotted along the Loire Valley, and some of them are as old as the 10th century. And when you get to Sancerre uh, at the the eastern edge of the Loire uh, wine regions, it's magnificent. It is, it's breathtaking. Some of the views, medieval perched um, villages and vineyards, as far as I can see. It certainly that, has a great yeah. history of uh, winemaking and, um, and, and this grape, interestingly enough, Milan de Bourguignon gets its name because it used to be planted in Burgundy. And uh, eventually the Dukes of Burgundy kind of refined what grapes could be planted in Burgundy and this didn't make the, uh, the cut, but it was already called Milan de Bourguignon. So everyone kept the name uh, and it kind of found itself in this little seaside town, uh, right where the greatest oysters of France are found and it's kind of an optimal placement for it. The name uh, you see on there, so it's Michel Bréjean and he has no uh, no children to take over the domain. He's a, um, he was approaching retirement and his friend's son, who's pictured here, uh, Frederick Lallier, was a wine student and did not have a job. So it was a kind of symbiotic relationship there. Fred has converted all of the vineyards to certified organic viticulture. And that's uh, no small feat in a region like uh, Muscadet, where it's uh, cold and it's rainy, um, and organic viticulture takes a, a lot of a lot of labor. Um, but he's done it, and the wines are um, as good as ever. Uh, as Ian said, they're a great way to kind of start a meal. The vibrancy and the acidity, and the, the way that the, the wines can pair with just about anything, and also the fairness in prices. Um, is something that gets um, sometimes a little bit lost on, on Loire Valley, but people in the wine industry drink a lot of Loire Valley wines because there's so much value in the wines. Well, we are about to go into course number two and Chef, we'd love for you to talk about our second course and uh, answer any questions along the way. Um, you put them in the chat box. It looks like we actually have a couple chats already. so. Um, if, uh, if I don't answer you, Chef or uh, Adam uh, can chat with you as well. But uh, David uh, K, what do you think of that Muscadet? It's, uh, yeah, I love, uh, I love the, that, that, like that, red, yeah, the acidity is just fantastic. Um, I haven't had a lot of Muscadet and uh, I was anxious to try this because uh, I've had all the other wines from the Loire except that. So I'm really, really enjoying it. Especially with that first co uh, course, Chef. Wow. That's <laughs> so good. Hey, good to give <laughs> Jess, you're, you're more of a sweet, sweet Vouvray girl. But what do you think of the, of the Muscadet? Did you like something that, that dry? I actually did. Uh, it was very refreshing. It just, like, just woke up my tongue, my palate. It's like, wake up. Yeah, it's, yeah it's like, thank that's you. Why. That's the way to go. That's what it does. That's its job. And to me, it just stimulates the appetite and really prepares the palate and the energy level for a great feast. All right, let's move into our second wine. And uh, Chef, uh, why don't you tell us uh, about our second course? So the second one, yeah. So it's a potato uh, coffee. You know, it's a potato coffee with duck fat. You know, I just make like, uh, when I grew up, it was more like a sauté, uh, potato so sauté in the pan. So I make different versions, like something more easy to warm up. And so I just uh, cut the potatoes in the, in the like, a, like, kind of like a tagliatelle. And I run that together, cook it duck fat with some bit butter and thyme, garlic. And after, uh, you, you just need to put that in the oven. Uh, the quai was just to sear one side in the, with the legs, put that on top to the, to the potatoes and just warm up like this with a bit of uh, quai jus. And on the side, the lentilles with the quai eggs and truffle, a bit sandwich. On the sandwich, you can sear that so when you cook, when you 
when you put your oven, your, your potatoes in your oven, I'm sorry, you can also like warm up both sides, make a little coloration, and it would be good to, uh, to have something crispy and the coated cheese inside a bit like, a bit like warm. Or you can invite that directly with a quail and it's not a salad, it's up to you, you know. Excellent. I'm showing off the menu. Uh, those uh, uh, that are on Facebook or maybe didn't get the menu with us uh, tonight, but uh, also um, just wonderful to, to read a, a beautiful menu. I think a lot of us, uh, the only menu we read right now is in the drive through. So. <laughs> and also, you know, I to, when, I make, when I make this menu, I'm sorry to interrupt you. When I make this menu, I try to make something easy at home to, to warm up. You can taste the wine and not go to kitchen and, uh, and cook something. I really want to have anything just to put in the oven to make ready to eat right away, you know. I hope they would enjoy it, actually. Thank you. Hi, may I add to uh, Chef Aimé's uh, uh, the uh, confit de pomme de terre? The potato is amazing. How do you make it like so thin and then roll it? It's almost like a snail shell, but much more complex. But it's, it's like I say, you know, you just take a, the, you take your potatoes. You have, I have a special machine when I make a, like very thin lamelle. Take a long time to do it and to to to, to, to say to uh, to you. And you run you run this 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 potatoes. You cook that you put that in a circle in the in the ring. And uh, you sear one side, you sear another side with duck fat, butter, and uh, you know when it's cooked, you take that away and uh, you just warm up. It's, it's very, it's very easy, but sometimes it takes a long time to do it. It, it, it's, it. I think it's not easy because I mean the way it's rolled so tightly like that in such fine detail that shows a lot of artistry. Thank you. Absolutely Thank you so much. Delicious. Absolutely delicious. Thank you. Anybody take a picture of their dish? like to see how someone's turned out. I, I, I will confess I'm saving mine for after. Oh, look at Stacy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spotlight you. There you go. Hey, Stacy. Hey, Jack. Hi. Hi. Cool. You see, I don't know. It's hard to get the- uh, I'm my mise en place, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> good, good. Bonsoir. He was hot enough, yeah? You put a long time in the oven to make, make sure it's hot. Yeah, I just said to Clark, do you want me to warm it some more? So that is a okay. good point. Because it's nice if you put some also some uh, fleur de sel on top of it and some uh, ground pepper, it's good. It gives some peps. Yeah. Make sure it's hot, you know. Delicious. Merci. Okay. Excellent. So delicious, we... Chef. Delicious. Absolutely ah. delicious. Here's my. Oh, the... That's a good shot. Look at that. Right. There. There, yeah. that way. <laughs> A student. I gotta blow that up. I gotta blow that up. Let me go. Let's go there. Again. Salut, Philippe. Salut, Karen. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Oh my gosh. Come on. I mean, a little look at that sear on there. Oh my gosh. These potatoes. Nice I'm gonna presentation. Eat very, 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 nice presentation. Very slowly. Hey, Santa Claus. <laughs> <Ew. laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. I know. I call it a flavor saver. You know, once oh. he eats, he's got little crumbs for it's, later. It's the COVID <laughs> <laughs> well, what's really, Delicious. really cool with this dish is this uh, second wine uh, that, Adam, you turned me on to this like, I don't know, five, six years ago. Um, Fie Gris. This is not something you're going to normally see, but knowing that it's in the book um, and seeing the food item, um, it was just an awesome opportunity to show off an indigenous variety to the Loire Valley, something most people don't know about, Fie Gris. Can you give us a little bit of insight on this wine? I got I can go back into the slideshow and surprise you with a few more shots. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. It's a unique indigenous variety to the Loire Valley that's uh, a mutation, a relative of Sauvignon Blanc that uh, we all know really well, um, especially when it comes from areas like uh, Puy Fumé or Sancerre. And Sauvignon Blanc's now grown on 
just about in uh, every country of the world or lots of diff different uh, regional expressions. Eric Chevalier is the fourth generation winemaker at his family domain. And he's in Wiscade Côte de Grand Lieu, which you see right there. It's south of Nantes. And he does make Melon de Bourgogne, Muscade. But the other half of his vineyards are made up of uh, other varieties, like Grolo is another indigenous red variety in the Loire Valley that's um, kind of a lighter, thin skinned, uh, earthy variety. He has a little bit of Cabernet Franc, a little bit of Pinot Noir, and he has this Fie Gris, which is really one of my favorite wines from him. Um, it's a little bit darker skinned than Sauvignon Blanc, and it has a bit more kind of um, weight to the palate. Sometimes, you know, Sauvignon Blanc is really known for having that um, herbal edge, the kind of pyrazine, as they call it. It's like a fresh cut jalapeno or bell pepper. And you have that kind of refreshing herbal element in here with racy acidity again and kind of this, you know, lean palate. But there's a little bit of weight in there, this kind of gunflint minerality that I love and makes it Very really good. versatile for a lot of different food. And I liked leaning on that, the, the core of this dish, the potato. I always smell like a root vegetable, asparage, potato in this in the nose of this wine. I mean, it is slightly vegetal and that's what I love about it. Yeah, you don't want um, blueberry jam and, uh, you know, um, compote on your steak or your potato or your fish, you know. Um, that kind of savory salt and pepper and minerality elements of wine, I think, are something that we really kind of start to get into more as we get you know farther down our, our own wine journeys, right? That's right. Less is more sometimes. Sure. And this and this wine, um, uh, much like the last, has you know it, it's got kind of a similar winemaking profile, very natural, natural fermentation and um, uh, also from organically grown, certified organically grown vineyards as well. Indeed. The natural fermentation for people um, who are interested in that, it's, you know, the alcohol in wine, and I'm sure you've talked about this in a lot of your um, different events, Ian, but alcohol in wine is basically the conversion of sugar through the metabolism of yeast it turns it, you create alcohol, you create a little bit of CO2 and a little bit of heat. Um, and yeasts are kind of around us all over the place. Same with bacteria. Uh, sometimes they're in the vineyard or they're in the cellar. And over time, they kind of build up their own population, especially in really old cellars, like a fourth generation Loire Valley um, cellar in Muscade. Um, and those indigenous yeast, when they're it takes a little bit of time to kind of allow them to do their uh, to do their work in converting uh, the sugar to alcohol. But you get something that's a little more pure um, and a little less uh, confected than using a commercial yeast, which is is super viable. And those are available for people who want to make wine anywhere. Uh, you can get freeze dried yeast and kind of make wine in our backyard here in Silver Lake or anywhere where maybe there isn't a you know healthy population of yeast but by harnessing kind of the the unique yeast that are available in the vineyard and, and in the cellar there you're kind of enhancing the terroir of the wine and the terroir is i'm sure you've talked about before is a french word that encompasses the weather the soil the aspect everything the microbiology everything that kind of um connects to the wine and has an impact on the style and the flavor yes and it, it's kind of like you know uh this yeast selected these grapes so it's the yeast of this grape you know and so it's kind of a, a perfect dance partner and uh sometimes it doesn't work out because of other conditions things in the vineyard or next door neighbors um, or industrial parks down the street, they can influence the yeast in your vineyard. But when you have your own ecosystem and the yeast are able to develop themselves in this ecosystem, 
they're typically the perfect yeast for your place and for your grape varietal. Indeed. All right. Well, we're moving, we're cruising actually, and we're moving into our third course. Is everyone ready for that? Want to make sure we don't push you too fast. Um, David and Maria are, is Maria, uh, getting to eat there, David, or is she, she's just yeah, she's, uh, she's orchestrating. <laughs> you'd be proud. You'd be proud of her chef. <laughs> <I'm quick. laughs> cool. Did you get to try the wine, Maria? Yes. All right. Yeah, cool. it's, it's just I'm not supposed to, but I'm, I'm, yeah, she's on antibiotics, but it's day four and a half, five, so she's sick and tired a little bit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. I when when I uh, face that I, I I taste and spit. It works. Lisa, how are you doing? I'm enjoying. Yeah. Yeah. Very happy. Awesome. Awesome. Um, and did you enjoy that pairing? Yes. So, well, the first one was my first, probably because I like cheese, I like ham, I like potatoes. So, but just I could have that all day. Cool. Cool. Thank you. And um, Stephen Bouchon, pleasure to have you on the Zoom. Thank you for joining us. Uh, are you feeling all right? Are you in the? Are you ready for the third course? Yes. Okay. We'll move on to the third course then. And chef, um, are you able to drink the wine? Did you like the wine? Did you I like the wine? I like the second one. I really like the second one. The first one was good, but the second one, I really love it. Yeah, I think it's just- You can bring me some uh, one case easier for free where I would love it to have it. <laughs> All right. It's a it's a, a really good value. Um, and- uh, well, uh, really, uh, it's very good. I want to have a question for Michael. Michael Richard, do you like the, the wine with uh, your vegetarian dish? <laughs> yeah, actually, everything is blending beautifully. Um, the minerality. Can you put, you, you put your hat off, please? <laughs> Sorry, I haven't been able to get a haircut for a couple of months. So, uh, <laughs> great hair, Michael. Great hair. Looks Thank great. you. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, the, the wines are. are Beautiful with the, with the uh, food pairing, spot on. I, I'm the only pain in the butt who's a vegetarian, so Christoph did a, a beautiful uh, vegetarian meal for me, and and uh, I'm in heaven over here. I don't know. <laughs> I think everybody's kind of enjoying this, but this is this is really fantastic. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. And this, awesome. Okay, but the, the first dish, you know, is like a. It's also, you know, I grew up, we, we eat a lot of pot au feu, of course. I grew up in a farm. So all the vegetables was from the garden. And, uh, you know, maybe we put the pot au feu like, for a few hours at the time and we eat the, the, the beef or the whatever was inside of the pot au feu, a lot of vegetables in the winter. And I put the scallop and the pot au feu is good after this, this bouillon with vegetables, it's good after this. Uh, this guy with duck fat is very rich, have some cream, you have some lentilles, everything is kind of heavy. So this one is, is, is very light. It's, it's very pure, it's no fat, it's nothing. And the scallop, I think, is go together with, uh, with this uh, bouillon of pot au feu. When I was at uh, Restaurant Laurent with Robuchon in Paris, we was putting this uh, scallop with a string in the pot au feu like that. And people were taking the string like a beef at a ficelle, but with a scallop. And uh, together, I think it's, it's it's good. It's, it's light, it's tasty, and also put some flour de sel on this uh, scallop at the end, you know. And I think it's, it's very good. Standing. <clears throat> Any question? We will uh, we will taste that with our third wine, and move into. I just want to share the menu really quick. I've been trying. Trying to share that, and let me do that right now. Those of you that are uh, unable to indulge with us, it's the third course: the uh, bouillon de pot de feu with winter vegetables and no, 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 pot de feu, pot de feu, pot de feu. Is that? Am I getting closer? Pot de 
Po a fu, no? Okay, we'll do fu. It's okay. It's good. Okay. Good morning. All right. Madame, can you say po fu? Chef Aime, I was wondering for your uh, bouillon de pot feu, I was wondering what kind of base do you have it, like a fond de cuisine? Like for, to make a pot feu? Uh huh. Your version. It's very light. It has a slight sourness, as though they might have white wine in it, but I, I'm not sure. I'll take, I'll take a big piece of big piece of uh, beef. You know, like um, folks forget the name in, in English uh, term this meat in English, but I just cook for a few hours with, uh, you know, the carrot, the celery, uh, bay leaves, uh, cloves, onions, uh, leek, and you, you cook for a long time. After you pass it, you make reduction, a little bit of your bouillon, and other okay. vegetables, like you have, you know, asparagus, carrot, I think, I forget what you have inside, and I cook it also inside. So like that, it's very tasty with vegetables, you know what I mean? So it's, it's, basically, very a, so it's basically a vegetable uh, from the cuisine. Yeah, but we have a meat, we have a, we have a beef, oh, we have a beef. Oh, oh that's a little beef in there. Oh, okay, yeah, got it. Thank a big, uh, a big uh, shake of meat inside. So it's not like a vegetable. It's very like you can still uh, smell the beef inside. You know what I mean? So Adam, we we'll go to wine number three. We we'll go to Sancerre. We are in Sancerre. So we actually do have a Sancerre, but it's a red Sancerre. And I thought this was really uh, fun, and this was Ian's idea. The Pinot Noir. Uh, there's, uh, you know, a little-known fact that about 20% of Sancerre is planted with Pinot Noir. Yep. They make red Pinot Noir out of it, like we have here. They make rosé, which is excellent as well. And um, in Back prior to phylloxera, which was an aphid that kind of destroyed a lot of vineyards in the 1800s, there was there was a lot more red Sancerre uh, planted in the region, Pinot Noir planted in the region. Uh, this is from Michel Reverdy. His family goes back to the 1600s in Sancerre in a village called Verdigny. And I think you can still see it on the label there a little bit. This is a view out of his cellar door looking at the town of Sancerre from Verdigny. Um, and he produces this wine sustainably, grows the wine, the grapes sustainably, and ages them in oak barrels for about a year. And you get a little kind of vanilla smoke baking spice from that oak in there. And, you know, there's, there's Pinot Noir that's grown very famously in France in Burgundy, Bourgogne, yeah. which is the kind of end all be all for Pinot Noir. But um, Sancerre has a really unique uh, expression and it's not unlike a lot of the Loire Valley wines that we've talked about, kind of low alcohol, uh, generally, um, really racy, refreshing acidity and um, a nice kind of mineral earthiness to the wine. It's not, the wines are not necessarily big and jammy and fruity, um, like wines from really warm growing regions, um, like Napa or the Barossa. They're, they're more restrained in their fruit character and concentration, and that's what makes them so wonderful for aperitifs and for pairing with uh, cuisine. As Ian's got up here, there's a, a lot of uh, white chalky limestone soils there. There's other, you know, pebbly, uh, stony soils in Sancerre. There's some really great, amazing, steep slopes. Uh, it's really a breathtaking um, area. Um, it's a great, it's a great trip. It's a great place to uh, visit. There's some of the winemaking uh, fermentation for two or three weeks. Pumping over is a winemaking process where you take the must or you, the fermenting juice and you pump it over the pumice of skins. And just like in a lot of table grapes, red grapes are, they're red on the outside, the skin, but the flesh and the juice is white. So it's that pumping over and the contact with the skins that extracts the tannin and color to make it red. Even this is still, you know, this is medium to light in terms of color extraction. Uh, it's aged in 400 liter barrels. The larger the barrels, the less the impact of the wood on the um, flavor of the wine. And uh, after about a year, he racks it and bottles it unfiltered. 
when you bottle the wine unfiltered, you're um, essentially, you have to be very careful for stability uh, reasons to make sure that the wine doesn't re-ferment in um, the bottle. But you're, you know, when you filter a wine, especially if you filter a wine too much or um, to an extreme level, you can sometimes filter out some of the flavor and aroma. That was something that's been really important to Kermit for a very long time. He did a lot of side-by-side -side tastings with Vigneron and producers with a, a bottled uh, filtered version of the wine and an unfiltered version of the same wine. Sometimes it's not necessarily apparent right at, right at first. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it takes a couple of years for certain wines, that, especially those that are meant for aging, to see the difference later on. There's a tendency for a lot of people to, you know, they don't want to see the uh, maybe a little bit of sediment in the glass and the stability issue that I talked about. But if there's an opportunity to bottle the wine unfiltered, especially reds where that are dry, where there's stability, meaning the wine kind of going off or having faults later, that's less of an issue there. So um, bottling and unfiltered and unfine often gives you a little bit more flavor, a little bit more aroma. You're not risking taking any of that away. I really think that, uh, and I, I wonder how many of you, uh, you know, have ever tasted a Pinot Noir from Sancerre. And even if you have, um, I don't think I've ever had one that is so juicy and so, um, voluptuous and 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 really got so much so much uh to offer right now at this point and it, it, this has you know great concentration and and fruit flavors and i really think that the you know that there's a, a movement in sancerre with the, these producers often sending their children to work down in burgundy to kind of bring back some of the the techniques but these wines used to be so austere and so, uh, you know, un, un Burgundian like, and yet this one, I would have a hard time keeping this out of Oregon in a blind tasting or, you know, something like that. It's uh, just really got some wonderful fruit definition. And I think it's quite likable. And the price point is remarkable. So uh, one of my favorite uh, little values um, and everyone that's on this Zoom tonight uh, after we're done, gets a very special um, offer on all of the wines that we're tasting, and um, you're going to be remark. You'll be amazed at the value that we're able to pass on in this wine. Excellent. Yeah, great, great stuff. How is the food working out with the wine? Yeah, it was just kind of delicious. Delicious, um, Chef Chef M A and uh, and Ian and Adam. We just wanted to say thank you so much for organizing this. Um, Stacy and I are, are longtime fans of Chef M A's, um, and we've also invited our friends David and Allison to join uh, this evening. And they're, <laughs> down there, <laughs> they're they're waving there. Um, I also just wanted to note that Stacy um, gave me this dinner this evening for my upcoming birthday because. Um, when I was 20 years old, I lived in the Loire Valley. Um, not only is the Loire Valley known for its great wines, but it's also known for being the most pure French um, in France. And so I was about to embark on a, a university program in, in Paris or in, in France, and I was sent to a language institute in the Loire Valley to study. <laughs> because it is the most pure French. So it's really lovely. Um, th at that time when I was 20, I was like biking around to uh, various chateaus and vineyards, um, <laughs> tasting some of the great wines. And that was my first introduction, but it's uh, it's so lovely to revisit the Loire Valley with with all of you and just wanted to say thank you. Thanks, Clark. Thank you so much. That is a wonderful story. Thank you for sharing. Happy birthday. Bon <laughs> anniversaire. <laughs> Merci, 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 chef. Hey, Brooke, Brooke C. Voss, thank you for, look at that. Look at that, chef, come on. How are they doing? Sorry? How's Brooke C. Voss doing on the, on the presentation there? They got the camera on, the, on their dish. I don't see, I don't see it, I don't see it, wait. Oh, you know, you have to change screen maybe. 
They're on the okay, next. Okay, I saw easy. Okay, okay. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Sorry, we're a little slow at the cooking. <laughs> did, you put some, did you put some fleur de sel on top of it? Yeah, we put a little. Okay, you put fleur de sel. Good, good. You see, it's good, no? It's light. Is that good? It's, it's Everything's fantastic. It smells terrific. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd love to hear anyone else have any comments. Hey, it's yeah. am it's amazing how good this Pinot Noir goes with this broth and this. I I would have never have paired something like that. I mean, I wouldn't have thought of it. It's just it's hitting everything. It's just so damn good. <laughs> so thank you again. Yeah, That's great. That's great. The acid is such a good dance partner, right? Uh, let's see. I want to make sure we got uh, everyone else. Anyone else want to make any comments before we move along? And I, I don't want to push things too quickly. I don't see uh, Francois. Francois, what do you think about the wine? Here we go. Fr Francois had uh, another thing he had to do, so he wanted okay. to support. He wanted to support. He took the food, but he has uh, another event, so he'll. Um, He'll have to get back to you. <laughs> yeah, he, he'll have to get back to you tomorrow. Um, but this is my first red Sancerre, and it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, just smooth, um, low acidity, but but pairs very nicely with the, the vegetables that, um, that Christoph uh, prepared. So beautiful. Thank you. And uh, Tanya, what do you think about it? What do you think about the wine and the food? Well, I sadly didn't, I'm not very computer, computer savvy, so I missed the wines, but the food is absolutely fabulous. I'm enjoying every single bite. It's, it's terrific. So as always, thank you, Chef. Thanks, Tanya. Next time I'll get the wines. I'll find <laughs> out how. All right, last time I managed, this time I just couldn't find it. All right. So, Anyway. We got you. We got you. We're loving it. Uh, I accidentally ordered one thinking it was for two. And so I've had to share this dinner with my husband of 17 years. So I figured, you know, <laughs> fine. however, we're basically licking the plates and <laughs> chopping up the wine. I've never had a red sunset as well. Delicious pairing. I was like skeptical with the scallop, right? Because you think so light, we need something like a white sunset delicious and the food is just absolutely exquisite as usual per usual Perfect. everything fits right. together with love and i want to keep doing it over and over and over and and <laughs> i don't have to make it myself and my kitchen is gloriously clean so i am <laughs> thrilled thank you is it okay etiquette to slurp the bowl um i, I actually <laughs> have some right here that i'm saving for a little bit later on the side I can do it off camera. I don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> go off camera. Just lift the bowl. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you approve of the, the pairing with the red sancerre? Um, I, I don't you know, have I talked about this, this pairing in particular, and it's so interesting to talk about because with the, you know, kind of concentrated beef and vegetable kind of uh, flavors in the soup, we thought, yes, a kind of a lighter red would make a natural progression. Yeah. Um, it would seem kind of obvious to do another white, but uh, let's try something a little bit different. And it, and I'm happy to hear that a lot of people are enjoying it. Do you do you like it as well? Or are you... The, the, the problem, you know, I'm in my office is here because I don't, uh, you know, I stay all day in my kitchen, but I think with the scallop, like when we talked with uh, Ian at the beginning, I think the, it's a good idea to put this uh, light red with it because we have the beef go together like this. I think that it's a perfect, uh, perfect match, uh, match uh, wine and, 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 uh, and food. And uh, like I said, I can eat my scallop easier, sorry. But uh, mm -hmm. I think it's very good together. And I love this one also, really. Huh? Terrific. You know, I talk with uh, Ian after maybe to make us order some because I really like it, really. Cool. Excellent. Like, uh, Perfect. Thank I you. Thank you. Uh, around 30 bucks a bottle to get a Pinot with that kind of pleasure is pretty uh, remarkable. So, uh, 30 bucks. 30 bucks. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, this is one of my favorite uh, Sancerre um, Blanc uh, producers as well. Uh, 
So I, I knew I, I knew that the that the rouge would be something compelling, and I was excited about it. So thank you, Adam, for for yeah. giving me the confidence. Thanks, Adam. Thank you so much. Pleasure, pleasure. It's super fun. All right, let's go into our fourth course, and um, I'll share the menu again for those uh, salivating at home. Um, and chef. Uh, is that a, a, a Italian in, in the Loire Valley? Is that possible? Please, please, no. please, please, please. Can, you can say something like this. <laughs> no, 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 no. I say cannelloni because uh, at the beginning, to tell you the truth, I want to do like more like a pasta dish or something like this. And I feel like it's going to be too heavy after the, you know, the potatoes, uh, all the vegetables, the, um, the, like, uh, the gougère, the bechamel, and you have the eggs and eggs, you know. So, uh, I, I want to do like, you know, when I was, uh, I was a chef in a two-star two Michelin in France in a, at uh, the Domaine des Templiers. And uh, we was doing this uh, special cabbage, a cabbage farci with a raisin inside and foie gras and truffle. And it was a kind of a signature delicious. And I think, you know, with a pork butt, I, eat, you can, I do the same things. You know, it's not cannelloni, it's not chou farci, but this kind of uh, idea of like you braise the pork first, roll that in the cabbage, you know what I mean? And, uh, and after you have this uh, jus réduction, you can top of it, and with some, uh, under, I'll put some uh, apple panais, uh, panais for you, and uh, celery. And that is very like where I grow up, you know, the winter, we have a lot of celery, where I come from, but the apple, we put the apple with the, the pork, uh, uh, pork sausage. So it's why I kind of, kind of mix all these souvenirs together and my experience. And, uh, and I feel like it's better to invite to the cannelloni, the pasta, the things, I think. Did somebody start to, to test already? Did uh, somebody eat it already? Delicious. Delicious. Somebody else? Beautiful. Mm. Adam, did you, did you test it? We are warming. We are warming still. Good, okay. good. It's a, a nice pace we're keeping here. Um, David and Maria, are you on this course now? Yes, just, just, just really, just on. We plated it just now. I haven't. Uh, can, can, you think, can we take a shot of your plate? I bet. Well, I, did, I bet Maria had a pretty winning presentation. Well, it, it, she added more for me. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, I don't know. You can't, you can't see it, can you? Yeah, right. yeah. Just hold it still there for a second. There it is. That's okay. nice. Oh, you know what? Let me uh, stop my uh, let me stop the share thing because I I think I'm on the small picture. Hold on a second, buddy. I know I don't, I'm sorry to take away from your immediate gratification there. Hold on. Yeah. There you go. Uh, and now we'll spotlight it. There you go. <laughs> big portion, David. Nice. Very Can nice. I eat it now? I know it's a big portion. Wow. <laughs> Can I eat it now? Yeah. 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 Like like that is like a love like a farm of. Like a farmer style uh, dish, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, beautiful. Beautiful, I think, with the one going to go very well, actually. This is Cab it? Franc's going to be great with it, too, I can tell. Yeah, we're real excited about this Cab Franc. Adam turned me on to this Cab Franc quite a while ago. And um, I will say, Adam, in the worlds of Chinon, there's some pretty interesting wines. This is one of the best I've ever had. Yeah. And, uh, uh, let's go into the slideshow and have you tell us a little bit about this producer. Nard Baudry. He is absolutely one of the stars of Chinon. Yeah, everybody knows him in Chinon. He's like a, he's a big guy. He, um, he studied in Burgundy and uh, because land in Burgundy is very expensive, he, you know, making Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. Um, he had some family in the in uh, the Loire Valley. He had ended up in Chinon and started buying uh, wow. small plots of vineyards little by little. And now he has five different single vineyard Chinon that he and his son Matthew produce. They're all from unique vineyards with a different soil type, a different aspect, a different terroir, if you will, and a little bit different élevage, maturation. So some of the wines uh, are matured in concrete, 
Um, some of the wines uh, that are meant for a little bit more aging, like this wine from the vineyard called Clogio, is aged in oak barrels. And you have that other kind of dimension of uh, flavor and texture. We talked about oak flavor in the, the Sancerre Rouge, but also oak, aging wines in oak develops the texture a little bit differently too. You have a little bit of oxygen that penetrates through the oak barrel. With red wine, it helps solidify the color. And then it also kind of gives you a little bit more breath on the palate. Um, if you taste a wine that's aged in stainless steel or only uh, maybe no aging, very little aging, next to a, the same wine in oak, the, the wine in stainless will be much more primary, fruity, maybe even kind of floral, and a little bit more kind of um, Sharp. Sharp. crunchy in terms of the texture. The oak helps kind of build this breath. It's kind of a, yeah, a silky texture. Um, and a nice kind of, not only the, uh, the textural dimension, but the, the uh, aroma and flavor too. So this is, uh, this Clogio is, this is a great slide that Lee and, um, Ian has here. It's this very steep slope towards the top of the coat, top of the hill, uh, mostly uh, kind of a Tufo yellow limestone that's famous in the Loire Valley, mostly in Bouvray and uh, mostly south facing exposure. So, so you get a, a lot of good uh, sun exposure there. More, more uh, sugars, maybe a little sweeter. Yeah, it's got you know? great, great definition. And that nose is insane, man. This has just got, I mean, so many cool things that are coming to the top of the, of the glass. Now, Chinon is Cabernet Franc and it is a, uh, a funky grape variety but this is just i mean the nose on this thing is just breathtaking and i, I can't i couldn't imagine it with that dish and i can't wait to try it later wow. and as ian said cabernet franc is the it's really the great red grape of the loire valley uh, you know we have pinot noir and sancerre oh, too and there's some other red varieties, but Cabernet Franc in the Loire, kind of grown in cool climates, has just, they, they really work well together and in different appellations. Chef, I'm sorry, we don't have Summer Champigny or Anjou Rouge yeah. closer to to where you're from, but Chinon is not, is not too far. And there's other Maybe. villages um, like Bourgoy that are, um, that are also equally um, produced, equally dynamite. Uh, Cabernet Franc. All the Baudry vineyards are farmed organically. This is a lovely shot here, Ian. Um, and for this wine, it does age in uh, oak barrels for about 12 months. Most of them are older, so you get very little kind of, you know, not a real kind of oaky, toasty, vanilla, um, obnoxious kind of flavor. It's just an accent. Um, both flavor, aroma, and texturally. So this is a wine we can drink now. This is 2016, but you can also age this wine, keep it in the cellar and drink it over time. It will develop more tertiary flavors, uh, that kind of leather tobacco as some of the primary fruit kind of fades away. Hey, it's kind of a, it's kind of a smoky little bit, no? A smoke it's like a smoky little bit, no? It is, it's like a, it's like a little bit smoky, like a smoke, no? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I get uh, a lot of graphite, uh, gunmetal. There's a lot of uh, forest floor mushroomy tea. Yeah. Tea, tea. Yeah. Yeah. Soubois, the mm -hmm. that kind of piney underbrush, that kind of damp earth. Some of those things sound funny when <laughs> you're kind of talking about some a consumable product but um again, again i mean really uh it's just grapes because it's just grapes um and you know compared to uh some other new world wines i love new world new world wines too but um you know where it's all fruit it's all just it's only fruit or it's only fruit and oak having this dimension of smoke and this these kind of pine needles and the, the forest floor and the earth, that is the, that's the hallmark of a really amazing combination of the grape and the site and the winemaker. 
using everything to the best of their ability to bring the most complex wine together in the bottle. I, my, my bottle is singing. And, uh, you know, we, when we poured these, uh, some, some, uh, one bottle we poured yesterday afternoon, I think that's the one I have. And then the one we poured this morning before we sent out the deliveries. Um, but, uh, the bottle I have from yesterday, it's like perfect decantation. It's really showing great. And, uh, and, and th this is not an easy wine to love. This is a true country wine for a true country dish. And I think uh, you um, made something really, really cool, Chef, uh, for, for the wine. And uh, I hope it's, it's pairing well. I'd love to hear some more comments. And Adam, um, Adam, this, uh, this wine, what's the maturity of this wine? Like in 10 years, 15 years, like really the best of you can touch a bit with wines to drink it is like you know i would now, say between 10 now, and 15 years of age yeah 10, years. i've had older vintages of uh well this this vineyard was only planted in 93 but i have had older vintages and honestly chef i've had other baudry wines and other bourgeois and chinon they age remarkably well yeah uh, i know i know it's, it's kind of like somewhere between if you am like an imaginary uh combination of like burgundy and bordeaux right mm -hmm. so it's not quite as um ethereal and as um lean and refined as burgundy but it's not as bold and kind of like you know full-bodied and powerful as is bordeaux yeah. But, you know, as you know, Cabernet Franc is used in Bordeaux. It plays a big part, especially in the right bank for wines like saint Emilion and um, Pomerol. And, and these are wines, I mean, how much are you selling this wine for, uh, Ian? Uh, I, off the top of my head, it's less than 50 bucks. So a collectible wine, a decade old ager for $50 like that's it's almost unheard of in red burgundy from the Cote d'Or nowadays yeah. um and they're they're just they're so fun sometimes we get some older vintages I'll, I'll let Ian know um when when we do and they're they're lovely yeah and this is this on the scale of of Chinon this is at you know pretty close I I, I don't know Adam is there one that they make that's even more triumphant and grandiose or is this uh, kind of at the at the upper echelon the clogio and another one called um Croix Boise are both at the very top echelon of their collectible uh the highest you know com uh, complexity level uh of their 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 lineup and 16 is a, a very good vintage uh in in many many parts of 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 France, it's a, a real collect, a collectible, classic, you know, uh, trustworthy vintage. If you couldn't make a great 16er in in many of the places of France, you're you probably don't have the great dirt. And this this producer has great dirt, and and also amazing uh, uh, a reputation to uh, defend every year too. So they are very protective of their reputation. This is a great winery to visit for anybody who ever again when we get to travel again uh matthew uh bernard's son is is fantastic he speaks great english there's uh, the vineyards a few of the vineyards are walking distance from the the winery and um to be able to taste the differences from just different parcels different ages of wine um uh different maturations and he makes a little bit of white and rosé too it's it's a uh, super super fun where chef where when you go do you stay with family or do you have a favorite town that you go stay with because uh, uh i've only stayed in tours is that a good place that you, you recommend staying no tour tour is a beautiful city we could have tour before it was les, les jardins de la france tour it was it's a beautiful beautiful area place before I don't know now, but I think now it's closed. It was a restaurant, Jean Bardet, with uh, two Michelin stars. So it was a beautiful city. You know, when I, when I come back, 
I come back and stay with my mom because she's still living in the house in Yatou, Roger. You see a Saumur, I want to see on the, on the things. The Roger is on the left side of the Saumur. So I stay with her. And, uh, but, you know, I go to Angers because my, my second brother lives in Angers. So I don't, I don't go so much anymore because I don't have the time to go to Vouray, or Bourgogne, or this area. But it's so beautiful because so many people go to, like you said time before, people can go to Burgundy or they can go to Bordeaux. But really, Loire Valley has so much nice little uh, vignoble uh, with a very good price. We can buy some, some wine, drink now, or keep like for 15 or 20 years. And, uh, and beautiful, uh, nice restaurant also, some little garbot, and, and drink some very good wine. I have a souvenir uh, uh, with my father, of course, when I was younger, but you can drink some, uh, some bonzo, like we don't have it tonight, but uh, some bonzo is very good sweet uh, wine. And, and you buy uh, this period, it was the bottle for 15 francs. It was like nothing, nothing, nothing. And this one was exceptional. So you still, when you travel like that, on the saint nicolas bourgogne you all these things, you can stop in a little restaurant and you can have some very good wine with your... Uh, Little, uh, little pot of fur, little sandwich, whatever, and it's, it's so nice to go there. It's so French. Cool. Yeah, uh, you can actually take the TGV, I think, to tour and uh, from Paris. It's a stop. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like one hour and a half, I think. One hour, 20 minutes or something. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, uh, we will. Uh, go into our dessert course and we we planned to talk a little bit about Chenin Blanc and I think this was the moment uh, for Chenin Blanc this past year uh, I've seen incredible interest in the grape variety um, I've had some amazing wines at amazing prices and uh, we've got three of them uh, for you to try with the, the dessert and it's kind of a more of a shotgun approach rather than a single bullet. Uh, so we wanna see uh, which one you prefer and be able to taste all three if you can. But uh, oh. we're covering a lot of land, a lot of ground with this uh, flight. And we're gonna start actually with a pretty generous little wine. Um, and why don't we start actually with, with a discussion of the dessert itself. Chef, why don't you tell us what we got? We thought is a just, just a sweet uh, dough, like a pas sucré, with some chestnut, some uh, orange segment, and some uh, and some pickle, of course, par brandonjou. You can find that here, and uh, I make some little crème d'amande, and uh, use the crème d'amande. Usually, I use more like uh, eggs and uh, cream to make like the, kind of like a clafouti, but because we have the end of January, and January for us in French is the uh, galette des rois, and galette des rois we use uh, some. Uh, Almond the cream to make a galette. So it's why I put it inside the tart. And I think these two together like that is like very winter, like you know, chestnuts and orange, you know. And pea, I think the, it's very, the taste together is very good. And plus when I was a kid, I grew up with, uh, my mother was all the time making like or tart. It was like uh, the weekend with my two brothers was eating like four to five tart every weekend. So it's why I want to make the point to make a tart tonight. Fantastic. Uh, did anybody get into dessert already? Or maybe you started off dinner with dessert? Well, I, I did both. I started <laughs> with a, a bite and now I'm just having it with the uh, with the meal. It's absolutely delicious, Chef. Thank you. It's, uh, hey, Kenya, thank you so I much. I was at your wedding. What was the name of the vineyard that we, we had dinner at for your wedding? Uh, it was in Saumur, it was a uh, champagne style, a metal champagne, it was at the, uh, forget now, uh, a mass. Uh, you'll, have to, you'll have to put it in the chat box when you figure it out there, Chef. Because okay. I don't remember, because that was fascinating. Ask, ask the Yeah, yeah. Ask Adam is in Saumur, it's like a method, uh, champagne, method champagne, uh, like a mousseux thing, what's the name of this thing? It was very good. It was very nice. It was like, what? Tanya was like 40 people when it was there. It was very nice. It's beautiful. Wow. Beautiful. I forget well, the name. Go ahead, Chef. We, we will uh, now pair the dessert uh, with. Uh... 
but the incredible lineup of of Shannon. Unless there's anything else you want to say there, Chef. Yeah, and I don't I don't have a, a, a name in front of me. I have a five, seven, and six, five, six, and seven. What's the difference? What was the five? What was the six? What was the seven? I will tell you. Yes, sir. Sorry. Yes, we'll get there. Uh, let me pull up the right slide. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> so we're doing this presentation, and we're we're showing a range of 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 Shannon uh, because. We wanted to see how the dessert would do with kind of a drier style of Shenin and explore it leaning into the, the ripeness levels, different ripeness levels, different uh, residual sugar levels, which, you know, Shenin is a great storyteller and it really kind of depends on how you like your wine and what you're serving it with. And um, uh, so we, we, we kind of cross a large number of genre here and as in the spectrum of Shannon. And uh, we start off with this wine. Adam, tell us about this this baby. So this is uh, this is a bit of a tongue twister, but it's uh, Jeanier from Janvier. Uh, <laughs> it's how it's pronounced. Uh, so it's Coteau, and it's the in this- is very good. Yeah, in this instance, uh, we are in the, we are north of the Loire River, um, and we're in kind of one of the cooler um, mesoclimates in the Loire Valley. It's 100% Chenin Blanc. Chenin Blanc, interesting, like a lot of these wines, is rarely blended. Um, you know, there's certain wines that are kind of uh, whites and reds that, are, that have a, uh, that really kind of become more complex when you blend them together. Cabernet and Merlot, for example, or with, with whites, uh, Sauvignon Blanc and sometimes Semillon in Bordeaux or in other areas. Chenin Blanc is rarely blended. It's really known for having a bracingly high acidity and it has a diversity that's only really matched sometimes by things like Riesling in terms of Chenin can be dry it can be off dry, it can be unctuously sweet, and you can make uh, sparkling wines from it too. Like Chef was talking about um, Anjou Cremant. Um, here in uh, Coteau du Loire, so Jeanier is like one cote, one little hill, and Coteau du Loire surrounds that area. Pascal has vines on both, and this is from 100% uh, Chenin Blanc that's aged in Enox, so no oak. Uh, it has a little bit of residual sugar to balance off that bracing acidity. And I think it really shows you a lot of that kind of like yellow apple fruits, um, the kind of broad texture and kind of, it's a, there's a certain kind of like weight to the wine too, density um, that works on its own. It can work with cheeses. It can work with a, a dessert that's not so unctuously sweet, like the Père d'Anjou. Um, and you could also have it with something that perhaps is a little bit sweeter too. It's very good. Yeah, it is very good. It, it, it has a purity of pear that I, I often, I think gets lost sometimes in, in super ripe and, uh, but this, it's so pear forward to me and I just love it. And I'd love to hear what people think of the, uh, our first Shannon. Jess, how's it treating you? I, sh I shared this with you when I first got it and it's- Yeah, it I was uh, one of the lucky ones to uh, indulge in it first. And um, yeah, it's, it's quite remarkable. Um, it, it, you can't go wrong. It never gets old. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, I think as it's aging, it's getting better. It's softening and getting more lush. And, you know, uh, it's that, that's what's really great about this this wine. And a really cool little little producer. Thank you for turning me on to it, Adam. Of course. Johnny, you know, people will have a Vouvre later. Um, at different sweetness levels. Jeanier is kind of a, it's kind of like the equivalent of Sancerre Rouge for Pinot Noir. Um, 
it's few, few people kind of even know where Jonier is or what it is or what it's made out of. It's kind of a little known appellation that specializes in, um, there's Pascal, yep, uh, that specializes in Chenin Blanc. And in this one, I think there's a little bit of it in here. You know, one of the kind of attributes that, that's interesting about or that people sometimes find in Jonier that they don't necessarily find in other regions that make Chenin, like Vouvray or um, Sauvignier, um, is that there's this kind of like celery root, a bit of a kind of herbal edge um, in uh, Coteau du Loire and Jonier that um, is unique to that, to that terroir. This looks like it's done in uh, those uprights there that are uh, probably just a nerd container. Yep. No oak. The label kind of has a picture of his house essentially on it. And then the winery is off to the left. Um, and I don't have a good shot of the, the bottle, but um, yeah, a nice little farmer wine and uh, very good value. Um, and we have a great price on it too. So. How much is the bottles? This, this wine, what's the, what's the suggested retail here? Uh, I'm curious, Adam, because we, we took a pretty good position on this wine. Yeah, 20, 22 bucks, maybe. Yeah, so we're, we're pretty light of that, Chef. We're under 20 bucks on this wine. Nice. I think it's about 15 on the website. 15? 15. Okay, let's do 10. All right. <laughs> you know, when Michelin star chefs uh, start spitting prices, then you, uh, uh, the importers start listening. So uh, uh, that's how it works in the restaurant. But um, we moved down the street to Vouvray. How far away is... Uh, is wine number one from wine number two as far as distance goes, uh, Adam? Not far. You basically move south about 20 kilometers. Okay. You know, uh, you cross you cross the river uh, and Vouvray is a little village uh, next to Tours, which we talked about earlier. It's kind of, you know, one of the bigger cities there in the Loire Valley. And right now we're kind of, we're like in the middle of the valley. So before we're in, we were in Muscadet, we're in the kind of Western Atlantic uh, coast, the Sancerre, you're on the, what they call the upper Loire, but you're kind of at the Eastern edge of the wine growing region. And in uh, Tours, in uh, Vouvray, in Jeunier, Coteau du Loire, you're like in the middle. It's same with, uh, you're also there with like, with uh, Chinon. Yeah. Um, Vouvray is maybe the most famous uh, region for Chenin Blanc in the Loire Valley. Although there's many, because it's such a it's such a, a wide region in general, there are many other smaller appellations within there. And Chef mentioned Bonzo earlier, which yeah. is another small region that specializes in sweet Chenin Blanc. There's other regions that you may have heard of, Cote du Léon. Um, there's Sauvignier, which is uh, right there near Coteau du Lyon, but it specializes in dry Chenin, specifically dry. And then Vouvray, which really embraces the versatility of Chenin. And you can have sparkling Vouvray, which is made in a champagne method. You can have Vouvray Sec, dry, which is under uh, legally under four grams per liter residual sugar. You can have demi-sec, it means half dry. You can have uh, molu, which is um, like sweet. And you can even have um, further kind of sweetnesses to that. Uh, there's one called liqueur or, or du. Um, and we're gonna have a molu after this. But this is interesting enough too in Vouvray, you don't necessarily have to use those those uh, sweetness designations. This is a wine from a family uh, producer, second generation now, Céline Champalou. She is lovely if you ever have a chance to go and visit. She's really, really wonderful. Very um, excited about their, their vineyards, their winery. 
that she's taken over from her parents. Her husband makes wine in Chinon. And so they're a bit of a dynamic duo in winemaking, white and red. And she makes the whole gamut, as I said, sparkling, um, dry and uh, off dry and sweet. This wine has just a couple of few grams of, of residual sugar. It's almost unperceptible with the bracing acidity level there. Um, and it has a lot of the character that um, Chenin Blanc is, is known for. We talked about obviously the acidity and the kind of density, but flavors that kind of range from pear and apple to apricot, kind of other stone fruit. There's a certain kind of like um, woolly kind of moss, almost kind of savory character there that is, is once you kind of pinpoint it and you kind of like, ah, yes, I get that. Um, and it's got a really kind of appetizing finish too. Adam, I'm, I think we made the right call here because the first wine had that residual sugar, but doesn't have quite the acid that this wine has. And I think the wine has almost identical residual sugar, but the acid level is just so much brighter here. And it just kind of like, you know, sews together the, the, the finish on this wine, it almost finishes dry. You know, it's got this kind of big impact at first and then sizzles dry in your mouth. And it's really a fa fantastic Vouvray. Yeah, I mean, we're talking, we're getting a little geeky with the, the technical, you know, talking about this wine probably has six grams per liter, you know, and with a really high total acidity level, if you kind of looked at the, you know, the chemistry of the wine and low pH, which is a measurement of the, the, the power of the acidity. So I would say this is, I mean, this is dry wine, right? But, um, but it still is it's so versatile. You could have it with this, with this tart, you could have it with, um, something that was maybe spicy you could have it with uh, you could have it on its own it's kind of a cocktail wine i hope everybody's enjoying it it's a real it's a real favorite uh for me the the domain and uh the go-to go-to wine for me that was a great picture you you had there ian of celine and her folks too yeah, I, i've actually met them at uh tastings in the past too oh terrific yeah really nice folks Chef, what would you think of the Vouvray? I love it. You know, I, like, I is, it, is it working with your dessert? Is it too dry? I don't. I don't have my dessert with me also. I don't have right, any. We food have to ask me. the rest. We have to ask the rest. What is? How's it going? It, it, is it too dry? Because we're going to go into a wine that's a little bit more hedonistic and ripe, and and see if you think that the which one of the Chinon works perfect with the dessert. I actually appreciated the dryness of it. I thought it worked perfectly for my, my our palate. Um, I, I enjoyed it. I, I thought it played really well against the butteriness of the crust and I enjoyed it. Excellent. Uh, did you have uh, a favorite there, Jess? What, what What's working for you? Um, I love exclamation marks. I love play. That should be yeah. on your t-shirt. Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. Or just have a like a license plate that says Vouvray. Yeah. <laughs> you are a Vouvray girl. I also just want to say to Kieran, if that's how you pronounce your name, I love our palette. I love that it's like when you become a couple, you develop one palette. <laughs> 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 I mean, certain things not, but we definitely just tend to uh, agree. Yes, it's much well, easier for that perfect pairing <laughs> perfect you can <laughs> never not be together then <laughs> 17 years right you said 17 yeah that's amazing yeah. congratulations thank you yeah and 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 quarantine year counts as five years of marriage because <laughs> so, we've been in the house for basically <laughs> what it was like it's marriage uh uh squared yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we move into the Mu Yu and uh, a, a producer named Hue. And I uh, want to break us into the slideshow so you can see. We had um, um, 
the domain owner on a Zoom earlier this year. It was actually one of our first Zooms that we'd ever done. Uh, and she was lovely and we were able to taste uh, through quite a range of top high-end Vouvray's. This is uh, absolutely, you know, the name at the top of the charts, Huey. They've uh, owned some very important properties. And um, uh, let me go forward. Uh, everything that they do <clears throat> is done in the, in, the, in the highest form of biodynamics and uh, uh, really old vines, really important vineyard sites, a really old brand. Um, the brand actually has a very interesting story over the last 15 years um, as some family succession issues, tax issues became needed uh, to have a financier. And so uh, a new financier stepped in and new family ownership took over. And it's not necessarily, you know, your traditional French uh, uh, lineage transfer and so the brand has kind of got this new moment to kind of reprove themselves. Oh. And a lot of things are, are, are working against them and for them. And um, they've, they've, it's, it's a fascinating story. If you're really geeky into the wine uh, story of Vouvray, you might learn more about the, what's happening at Hue. Uh, but uh, the, they've got so a lot of things uh, working in the right direction, but they're also fighting an uphill battle with, um, you know, not being French and moving in and, and coming in and bringing their their personality to the region. Now, uh, they you know, are marrying in and they're being uh, part of the town and they've got the same crew working for them. But um, there's definitely uh, a lot of pressure on them to prove themselves and to take the, the top jewel of the crown with Huey and with these very important vineyard sites, everyone you know, shooting them, uh, shooting at them. And uh, so far the wines are getting amazing scores and reviews. Um, but this is um, Sarah Wang, she's a new owner. And uh, this is the transfer of the ownership from the former family. Um, uh, Adam, um, you've been very kind and incredibly insightful on the brands, but this is not a brand that uh, Kermit Lynch imports. It is a, it's just a famous wine of the place and represents a really important style. And if you have anything to say, you're welcome to punch in here. Well, I'm happy to taste this wine with you. Um, Gaston Hue was, uh, yeah, you have some information here, right? Yeah, we do. We just have a uh, kind of go back even further to Victor Hue, um, but uh, his son, Gascon, uh, well, I guess Ga Victor's son, Gascon, was born in, in, in 1910. Yeah, he's really the one who brought the domain to the grandeur that it is. And he was, he was a really important figure in Vouvray. Do you have it in there? He was the mayor of Vouvray at one point. Um, he famously kind of, I think, pioneered the idea of these kind of single vineyard wines in the region was his, um, was his idea. And he also embraced the diversity in Vouvray in terms of the stylistic uh, diversity he makes and the domain still makes, as I understand, you know, uh, traditional method, champagne style, sparkling wines. They make sec, they make demi-sec, molu that we're having. And then they make a really rich, unctuous, sweet wine called Cuvée Constance, which is like a do or liqueur. Um, and uh, I have a couple of bottles in the cellar somewhere of 2000, I think 2003, which is a really warm vintage. I ended up finding the wines at like a deal, but there's, you know, when you're buying from a really fantastic producer, the things like, uh, you know, vintage variation is less important to me. I kind of buy by the producer first and then the, the vintage second. Um, Adam, let me geek out for a second. When One of the things that they do at Huey is they pick the parcel 
and then they literally start the fermentation in the vineyard. Um, uh, this is a, a, a kind of another level of biodynamics, really trying to embrace its localism to the place and making sure that it's the indigenous yeast. They're not bringing it back to the winery and using the yeast that's there at the winery. And uh, they really want it to start taking place in the vineyard. And this in the vineyard uh, presence here is, is pretty interesting. You were talking about, um, we talked before the call about how this wine um, can be perceptibly mm -hmm. almost dry. And, you know, Molu, the designation, the legal de uh, definition would say that it's got a, it's usually between uh, 18 and 40 grams per liter residual sugar. So that means the acidity in that wine is probably really, really, really high um, to balance out that sugar. Um, you know, some of these Molu wines too have a little bit of botrytis. It's that noble rot that's famous in Sauternes and in Tokai. And it gives us uh, added, added dimension of kind of um, saffron or burnt sugar, marmalade to the wines. Uh, I don't know if anybody's kind of finding, you know, kind of a hint of that in this, but. It's definitely got like a spun sugar, uh, sugar um, component to the nose dried fruits as well. Any comments? Any preferences with the dessert? The, the, oh, that number, was, that number was, two was great. The, uh, the Vouvray just, I thought it was was bang on with mm. the dessert. First one was really good. The second one just, it seemed to layer in perfectly with the uh, with the dessert. I, uh, I love I love the Ue and it's uh, on its own. It's just, it's beautiful. I love number two with the, with the with the dessert. We would second that motion. It was really delicious. Uh, so soft and round and beautiful. That's number three. Oh. Yeah, we're firmly number no, three. No, no, he said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what he said. Our palate. Your palate. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> um, three. I finished the dessert before we got to number three. So. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, not sorry, <laughs> but <laughs> very cool. Excellent. Well, uh, Shannon uh, is a star grape variety and uh, the Wa Valley is one of the great places in the world that you can find it. I love, um, I do tastings with uh, some producers down in South Africa. Um, we actually, Adam, we just tasted a great Shannon Blanc from a producer named Astrolab in New Zealand. Uh, David was on that Zoom sensational wine lisa was on that zoom too both of them uh, came and got some um as shannon uh, is really a cool grape I, I love what we have here in california too in places like uh, santa barbara a vineyard called jurassic park we're making some cool stuff a little teeny producer that we have and we try to find little jewels at uh, the merchant of wine and have the good story behind them um and uh you know find the right price point and we scatter it around a little bit but um i've really really enjoyed tasting the wines with you adam and uh chef uh, the food is uh at the the main instrument tonight and i just hope we served the right wines to to kind of complement your beautiful effort because uh if i haven't said it already thank you because the I know that when you have a full chorus, a full choir, full uh, uh, orchestra to work with, you can direct, but you are literally doing all the work. You are the drum, the, you are the the strings, you are the the you know the bass. You you this is your food. You did every single piece of it. Yeah, and it's not easy because you know try to make something different, but it's not easy to feel like how I can make these things on food to go and people are cook it to cook it, warm up in Bourbon is not the same, you know, so it's not, uh, it's, the balance is not easy, you know, but I really enjoy to do it. I really hope everybody enjoy. Well, thank your wife too for letting us uh, invade and... Uh, and she uh, me a lot also, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> when I say that we've seen behind the scenes of <laughs> And just on his own, doing every single 
minuscule, you know, perfect execution of this kind of dinner, whether it's for four people or 20, five, however many pe people are here. And like you said, usually there are a lot of, you know, people helping, but, you know, our hats are off to you, chef for doing all of this and executing it and so beautifully and pairing so beautifully with the wonderful wine. It is not mm. an easy task and but it's always this, perfect. This whole concept of what you guys have arranged is actually super, super special. We've been looking to looking forward to it since the first one. Yes. So, um, and we're going to say next time, can we do Chef Ame and a Chateau Neuf de Pop? Somewhere mixed in there. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> okay, that's all. We will so, leave you with that. Bravo, everybody. It's been fantastic for real. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, everybody. Thank Merci. you, Chef. Thank you, Ian. Good job, Chef. Thank you, Adam. You're awesome. What a pleasure, Ian. Thank you. Well, everyone, I hope you had a good time. And please send your regards to Chef. Uh, we hope to be back to do some more things with you. I will uh share a little commercial with you at this time if you don't mind so we have a lot go of cool things going on um we went uh, from being able to be an event producer to being a zoom event producer so um we uh you know we we, we still are are finding our way a little bit but we have this super cool calendar at zoomintowine.com and uh, this this uh, Saturday night, we're in the Loire Valley with a phenomenal brand, um, actually um, started by the former winemaker of Louis Jadot in Burgundy. This is Jacques Lardier's brand called Resonance, and it is unbelievable. We're going to have two great Pinot Noirs from Oregon. Next week, we're in Portugal with a Portuguese wine importer being on the Zoom to help us learn all about great wines of Portugal. And it's not your port wines. We're talking about Vino Verde and we're going down to Alentagio. They make, they make some wine in Portugal? Oh, for sure, chef, they do. They're coming after France. They're, they're <laughs> these are wines that uh, <laughs> are definitely trying to become uh, some, some something to, to celebrate on a daily basis. And these are wines that sell for like 20 bucks, chef, and they're getting 93 points big scores, low price points. We go back to France for uh, a really cool tasting of Bordeaux with a, a Bordeaux importer. And we're gonna talk about the smell and the taste of the place. And we're gonna send six wines blind, have you talk, taste them, be able to talk about which one you prefer, and then maybe guess which one is from which place. It's a really fun way to learn um, he's an expert on these chateaus. Some of them are a thousand years old and we're going to have a really cool tasting of Bordeaux. Next week we have, um, LA Kings hockey legend, Jim Fox, also, uh, a student of ours, uh, for 10 years ago, probably went to law school. Um, one of our, our, our product called law school, learn about wine school. And Jim Fox is now the uh, broadcaster for the LA Kings. And he started a wine brand many years ago called Patine. It means to have skated. And it's the coolest thing ever because that's a hockey puck around the outside of the bottle. And he makes three really awesome Pinot Noirs from different uh, top vineyard, uh, vineyard top growers. And he's, his winemaker is going to be on the Zoom. His mailing list is going to be on the Zoom. This may be the biggest Zoom we've ever done. He is, he is quite a, a smart and detailed guy. And we've got so much support coming in. We've got people signing up from New York to Texas. And it's going to be really fun tasting. Um, Valentine's weekend, we do wine, cheese, and chocolate. We already have 50 people doing wine, cheese, and chocolate with us all over the country for this weekend. A great little Valentine celebration. We're gonna do a Screaming Eagle versus the top scoring wines of the past couple of months. Wines like Amuse Bouche uh, from Heidi Barrett, 98 points. Realm, 98 points. Vineyardist, 97 points. Paletta Walker, 99 points. And Scarecrow versus Screaming Eagle. Again, all of them will be blind and you will pick your favorites and then we'll unveil. It's a super fun way to taste some of the greatest wines in the cult 
we call it Colt wine, California ultra luxury table wine. And we do a Chardonnay expo expose with my friend, Chef Bob Blummer. He's on the Food Network and we're gonna do, uh, he's launched his new cookbook called Flavor Bomb. We're gonna do a little risotto with Chardonnay and we got three rocking uh, uh, Chardonnay examples from Kongsgaard, Census and Sabraja. Then our, our marquee event of the month of February is Roan Warriors. We're bringing super cool producers of Roan wines for three nights, six winemakers per night, top winemakers on the Zoom. Melville, Chad Melville, uh, Law Estate, Tablas Creek, Force Majeure, Andrew Murray, Lassiter, spectacular California Roan showcase. Uh, Ledge, Denner, Jada, Nell, Skinner, RD Winery, and then Night Three, McCain, Dusty Neighbor, Bouchong. I think we have a Bouchong on the on the Zoom tonight. Is that the same spelling? B U S H O N G in Paso Robles, and then Brecken, uh, Byron Blatty, and Troon from Oregon. Um, so a super fun. Uh, three night festival we call Roan Warriors. You can do one night or you can do them all. And that is just a really, really fun way to learn about the Rhone, to taste some great examples. Then we come into our Sancerre tasting and Adam, we're gonna use that Sancerre Rouge on March 3rd, if a supply holds up, we'll go and do that. And we've got a great uh, couple of whites that we're gonna show off on this particular Sancerre educational night. And then we finish up uh, uh, this calendar with March 6th with a, a great wine taster, a great one, man of wine, and a great quarterback from the history of the LA Rams. Um, Vince Ferragamo is going to do the Zoom with us. And he is uh, just a super dude. I get to taste with him at some great wine tasting competitions. He grows grapes down in Newport Beach. His family is obviously Italian. So he's going to do a blind Brunello taste off with some awesome Brunello de Maltocino wines. And we're gonna uh, send them blind and have you taste of those with a super amazing legendary guy. He was also voted like one of the sexiest men in the world back in the day. And he's still a super stud. I mean, Vince Ferragamo, come on. He was, a, he was like a, a, a childhood hero. And um, I'm super pumped that he's gonna do the Zoom with us. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So I have a question on the Valentines. The chocolate, does it have wine in it, like the South African vineyards serve, or is it you're just serving it as a taste with the wines? So we do um, a number of different chocolates. We showcase artisan chocolate. Um, one of our artisans is Miele chocolate here in Los Angeles. And then uh, we have a couple of chocolates from Valrona in France. So mm -hmm. we're we're, we're learning about how the chocolate is made. And then we tie in, we have some special flavors in the chocolate and we have uh, optimal wine pairings with the chocolate and the cheese. So we do six, um, we do three cheeses, three chocolates and six wines. And each one has got a unique pairing, kind of going savory, then sweet and savory, then sweet, having fun with that. And uh, I, I really think the lineup is top notch. Sometimes you should do some research into some the vineyards in South Africa, just uh, to the east of Cape Town. They actually have a chocolate that has wine in the chocolate. Oh, it's superb. All right. Well, I, I I love my South African wines. I probably have twenty of them on the website, and uh, we do we've done a couple of different zooms with South Africa as well. And we'll keep that going because they're huge producers of, of Shannon. Of course, we got the Pinotage. We've done something recently with Syrah and it's probably one of my favorite places for, for Sauvignon Blanc in the world too, right on the coast, Constantia. Amazing Sauvignon Blanc. Hey Ian. Yeah. Do you have any uh, plans to do anything from the, the Jura region of uh, France? I love that area, the Benjun and all those uh, famous wines and that. It's a really interesting region. Any uh, thoughts on that? 
Yeah, we, we did just do one not too long ago. We will oh, be really? back. We will come back. But we did we did have a couple of top producers on a Jura Zoom. And we're we're we you know, we take the calendar and we look at it, we try to find the right things for the right temperatures of the of the year and uh, obviously um, keeping the topicality diverse. So um, it, you can count on Jura being on our calendar, you know, within the next couple of months. And David, you're as one of our biggest supporters, you're going to know about it. I'm going to make sure of it. That's great. I wore my French scarf tonight just to, in, in chef's honor. I wore my, yeah, <laughs> my scarf. So it's, it's not cold in here. It's just, uh, I'm, miss, I'm, missing, I'm missing being able to go to France. We're, mi we're missing being able to go there. It's just so, it's so horrible, right, you know, to not be able to travel. But one day we'll get back. Soon, in 2025. You can go again. It's too long. <laughs> 25 five years. <laughs> no, don't say that. <laughs> well, uh, Chef, you did uh, remarkable work. And uh, I really thank you for sharing it with your, your fans. And uh, I hope they also enjoyed the, co the collaboration. Um, we will talk again and continue to invent some cool stuff. And I hope we can all see each other again, if not in person, um, here on Zoom very soon. Thanks. Oh, great. Thank you again. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for this evening. Thank you very, very much. See you very soon. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. We miss Cass. Enchanté. <laughs> Merci. Merci, Chef. Merci. 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 À la prochaine. Bravo, buddy. Bravo, man. Merci. Bravo, bravo. <laughs>